Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel, Heir of Carthage here, or Heir of Tyranny, Heir of Ashut, whatever is more appropriate for this Chaos Dwarf setting. I apologize for being away from this for a few days, things just got away from me, got busy this week, and I'm also preparing to be gone for a week on vacation, which means that I've been having to try and fit in more time to record, all that while it being kind of a difficult time to record to begin with. Hey, I'm getting it done. I am glad to be here, and I hope you all are enjoying the videos. I am doing my best to keep them flowing. Anyway, like I said, thank you. Thank you for watching and being a part of it. I'm going to continue where we He's left off. Sauron. I have a number of Best skill Lord. points here uh, in this army to take care of. I, whenever I'm doing um, magic upgrades, and you all may have a way that you like better, and you don't have to follow this, but I really like to drop the miscast chance because miscast damages your opponent or yourself. And then I like to get Arcane Conduit as well, because it gives you more magic. Um, so you'll see me often focusing magic characters in that direction. Now, we have a ton of tower influence, because we don't have to worry about the whole tower thing anymore. Um, but we can still use that to build up massive towers very quickly, like we just did here at Karak Azul. Um, so that is one of the, uh, the advantages. Uh, we've got Zaten, the Black's army there. And then uh, at Iron Rock, we've got this guy... Cargan Deep Brow, which has some skill points for his recent defeats of the Greenskins. I was finishing up Black Shard Bulwark. Um, we need probably to go over here and unlock this stuff as well. I like getting my infantry obscenely upgraded because in this late state of the campaign, it is going to be really tough factions that we run into, and we're going to want to take those rather seriously. Um, and I think a great way to do that is to have an infantry line that's absolutely brutal to back up your already brutal um, missile line, like that I'm using here with the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, blunderbuss units. Infernal Engineer, missile resistance and reload skill to an ally. It's a passive. Dang, man, that is pretty sweet. All-terrain vehicle. Gives Vanguard to War Machines and Strider. That is also really cool. Uh, Reforge, of course, will heal. Um, will heal any... Yeah, I'm not using the, the demon units here, so let's not worry about Reforge. Let's do Infernal Engineer in this army. I think that will do well if we position him right. Um, let's see, what else did we have in terms of skill points? Let's go take care of the rest of these. I keep forgetting to do this the right way, which is up here on this bar. In this view, this is the way to do it. So Pizza the Hashut picks up another one. And never forget, folks, that Pizza wants you. And this is my Hobgoblin army, so this one is a little different. Uh, we're gonna finish up his... Eh, for Hobgoblins, they are obscenely strong because of the presence of Gorda's backstabber. Definitely recommend that you go after him. Let's see. Our Prophet Sorcerer of Fire has Flesh Sacrifice, Perfect Vigor, Thirst for Magic, Casualty Replenishment Rate for the whole army. See bonuses from the skill. Okay, Centaurs and Monsters. Okay, so this is what gets the bonuses, but we get a reduction. Centaurs and Monsters, yeah. I'm assuming that this doesn't just apply to these down here, because it says Lord's Army, and that one's specific, so... Man, that one is pretty good, Voice of Heshoot. Um, Flesh Sacrifice is cool too, but this guy's not really a melee character, which that would be really good on a certain melee character, so I'm just going to go with that. Um, let's see, what else do we want to do while we're in here? We had a bunch of skill points, because the last episode was just absolutely packed with battles. If you haven't seen it... It is a good episode in terms of if you enjoy a lot of fighting. And fighting aplenty was present. Uh, firing drills. And so many good upgrades. Seeing red. Frenzy is right now. There's so many good upgrades. It's hard to pick one. Make it harder for me or something. All right, so we've taken care of all the character upgrades. I do have a little bit of cash. We could do some more building upgrades, but I might just wait a turn and then I'll start a bunch of building upgrades. I do believe... Let's take one last look here at anybody who hasn't moved and see whether I would prefer to move them. This army is in pretty solid shape. There are green skins nearby. 
that we could feasibly hurt quite badly. Iron Rock, though, isn't defended, so even these little stink armies could come out after me. Black Crag is going to have a pretty solid defense. It will not be easily assailed, but there are two stacks of greenskins. What I'm considering here is whether I should come out and bash these guys' heads in on open ground. I certainly have the artillery support needed to do so. They're going to have a bit of a wah support here too. I mean, this would be a huge battle and potentially one that would be very beneficial for me. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. Yeah, my infantry has fairly significant upgrades. My skirmishers are going to be quite deadly here. I, I think we should go ahead and do this. I think the green skins will stand and fight due to their high numbers. Yeah, it's even predicting they're going to win. Now, I could lightning strike and win this quite easily. Um, but I'm pretty sure I can win it quite easily anyway. And so I'm going to just take them on um, and try and destroy them all. Uh this one go here so let's take a look at the terrain though real quick just to make sure nothing really stupid's about to happen no this is actually quite good i can create a choke point right there so let's go ahead and fight all right the battle's getting underway the enemy uh did as i expected and deployed way back i'm gonna go ahead and start helping I'm use this power stone to pull in some more magic and then I feel like I need to get over early and start um, wearing out the enemy leadership with Final Transmutation. It'll also hurt the units around him. Um, Final Transmutation is quite deadly. Uh, we're going to want to use that to our advantage. Um, I have kind of a cheeky plan in mind here, which is when the enemy reinforcements come on, they'll be very blobbed up. So I'm going to save these deadly Dreadquake Battery and Doom of shoot bombardments and try and hit their reinforcements the minute they come on while they're all blobbed up. So we need to keep a close eye on the timer there and I feel like we have the opportunity uh, to cause some pretty extraordinary damage. Alright, I'm going to move in and get a final transmutation started on their leader. I'm going to take some bow fire here probably. There we go. I'm going to dodge it. And then work my way out. We got a miscast, unfortunately, there, too. So we took some damage. But we're going to cause a lot of damage to their lord. Okay, 45 seconds. we got to get this timing just right when the reinforcements come on. All right, my artillery is opening fire. It is in range. I'm anchoring one of my flanks. Okay, they just had some of the reinforcements come on. And it looks like there are some of them invisible. Let's go ahead and drop this bombardment right there. We should catch most of them. And then the Doom of a Shoot I'm going to drop right here too. So hopefully a couple of brutal bombardments. Oh, come on. Land it, land it, land it, land it. Good. Yep, it was pretty successful. So the enemy is going to take some pretty egregious hits there. We cause tremendous damage to a large number of their units, and we might be able to cause even more. If I can get back here and get that in time, it's quite a distance off. This is a 200 meter spell, though. There it is. Alright, yeah, we got some good damage done there. Some very good damage. Let's drop another final transmutation. Two, one. Okay, so the enemy has paid a pretty substantial price already. And let's hope our artillery... I'm going to turn my artillery on and off, fire at will, so that they'll choose newer, closer targets. Some of them are still tracking original targets. But yeah, we, we caused a lot of damage uh, to the enemy there. They lost about 600 troops. Um, and their leaders have taken pretty substantial hit point damage from my, my magic as well. So if you take a look here, they got one leader on Death's Edge, and the other one not feeling so hot. Ooh, solid hits on the Black Orcs over there. Solid hits. Uh, the AI is deploying wide. Their wide deployment won't really avail them anything um, in terms of getting around my flank, and I'm going to protect this flank with both units of full centaurs, and let's just keep an eye on my leader out here. I'm just waiting to build up enough for another final transmutation, which we have a ton of magic reserve. Um, I just can't pull the magic in any faster at the moment, unfortunately. I'm going to once again on and off with fire at will. 
I mean, artillery continue to hunt targets. We've gotten a decent number of kills from artillery. Pretty solid damage. I think I'm gonna target into this black work. And then maybe put some shots into those stone trolls. Okay. Uh, my artillery, are they all on defensive? They are. Okay. I might be able to kill one of the leaders for the green skins here with the final transmutation, or at least get extremely close to it. Watch this character, though. He's going to come under fire. Just going to fly around right outside of range there to dodge shots. Okay, we got it off. We did not have a miscast. That might very well lead to the death of one of their leaders. And I think at this point I'm going to go ahead and retreat my leader here. I'm going to retreat both of my leaders. Kind of back behind my line, but close enough to where their influence, their leadership influence will be felt. Yep, we got one of their, their leaders. That'll help a lot. Greenskins are, are not happy about losing their leaders in combat, especially before the battle's even started. Okay, I have significantly weakened some of the black works. I'm going to start weakening some more greenskin infantry here. I'm looking for other black works that may be operating at full strength. I do not see any. Okay. Alright, so our magic is rebuilding. Enemies are inbound. And we're going to actually have a pretty fair few enemies coming around this flank. So I'm going to have to swing some protection back that way. Gonna reposition just a hair right there. And same thing here. Reposition just a hair in this direction. Okay. Alright. Should be in a good position to dish out some major pain. Now, I'm going to kind of do something a little bit odd here. I'm, I know the summon will kind of be a waste, but I'm going to summon right out here and just try and disrupt the enemy approach and delay the combat, hopefully, so that my ranged units can do some more work. And then while that's happening, I'm going to drop a big bombardment right out in here and see if we can further weaken our enemies. Yep, 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 yep. Let them have it. Feed it to him. Feed it to him. Feed him the shotguns. Feel the shotgun. Be the shotgun. Alright, I'm gonna pull back. Alright, pretty good stuff here. Pretty good stuff. Alright, so the mainline engagement is about to get underway. Um, I need my blunderbuss to fall back and prepare to take out the enemy um, Arachnorok spider. I need my artillery to sink these archers. Okay, so we're going to sink the archers, and then our flanks being engaged. This is a bit of a problem for me back here. There's tormentor sword there. Okay, where is that spider? It's right here. So spider is being targeted. Stone trolls are being targeted. I don't have any more bombardments, but I can buff all my units under center right there. And I brought my lord and other units here to help against those boars. And I can weaken the boars further. I've got a bombardment that is slightly out of range. I can't drop it there, unfortunately. I've got more debuffs. Let's use those. And then I've got a bombardment that we can open up over here. It is still a brutal fight. Somehow the greenskins are holding on. I don't really understand because honestly, like, they should be getting absolutely savaged at the moment. Um, like, there is... It's kind of... Un, like, I don't understand what's happening here. Like, how, how the greenskins have anything left to life. They got absolutely savaged with artillery. I guess my, my my infantry here is weaker than I had expected, but we did we did pull off a victory. It looks like they're going to chain route. I would have hoped and expected that chain route just a little sooner, but um, whatever. And it looks like we lost an artillery unit, probably to bow fire or something, would be my guess. But we drove back our enemies with extremely heavy losses. I'm gonna run down some of these troops on this side that managed to survive quite a lot and uh, otherwise I would definitely call that um, 
I would definitely call that a victory. Uh, I hate that we lost an artillery unit. Probably straight up killed it. I don't know whether these units are unbreakable. They are. So yeah, we, we lost an artillery unit we're going to have to replace. That sucks. Um, but, you know, like I said, not, not the absolute end of the world here. Hey, I want you all chasing over here. I want these units gone. Let's get our lord out here as well, because they're fast enough to catch. And then my artillery will shoot some of those guys on the way out, but I want to kill a few more of these units over here that are routing. I don't know if we can catch those trolls, but that would be a good kill. Then I want those night goblin archers. Actually, I'll send these guys after the trolls. They're the fastest. Let's kill these work air boys. Alright. I can final transmutation on them as well. No, 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 no. I want to drop it on the troll. Having trouble getting it targeted. Let's use our potion of speed here so they can catch up. I'm trying to get that final transmutation out on those trolls, and I think it's going to land right here. Yep, we got him. Alright. Okay. Run down these night goblins. Crushing archers. Okay, yeah, I know this may seem like a waste of time to some of y'all, but I'm trying to maximize the casualties to the green skin here, because I took a lot of casualties too. And I need to really maximize the, the green skin casualties in order to make this stick more in terms of hurting them. Anyway, I'll see you all back out on the campaign map. Somehow I managed to keep my artillery. I don't know how that happened, but I'll take it. But we, we dealt massive losses to the greenskins here. I am going to take the replenishment because, for all I know, there could be other forces around. We also picked up some nice rewards here. 396 labor, 2800 of the treasury, a lot of experience points. So this was a battle that the AI expected us to just flat out lose, and I can understand why. Uh, there was a lot of very powerful greenskin units here. Um, just fortunately for us, we were better. So, our quality won out here. And I would say won out pretty big. Now this is a concern. Wurzag is nearby. And I would say very near striking distance. There's another army here too, so... Aramae had done screwed up. Um, I'm gonna take my army and actually put it into an ambush stance and start moving back towards my settlement. Hopefully this will make it harder for Wurzag to be able to potentially get to me all in the same turn. All I need is one turn of replenishment and nothing around here will be able to challenge me. Um, so I think that was good. Um, we had a pretty good turnout there. Uh, solid victory. Uh, we'll probably want to go ahead and take care of those skill points because no doubt we, we received some as a result of that absolutely massive victory. Now we noticed there that our infantry is certainly not unkillable. Um, so we should probably continue to focus this marshaled military um, and then this too would help our uh, blunderbuss and artillery so let's do that, um, and most of those units are sitting on enough chevrons to take advantage of that. A few are not, um, but they will be soon at the rate at which they're picking up chevrons. So that will definitely make our infantry uh, continually more formidable. And then we picked up a skill point here for our Infernal Castellan. I'm going to go with uh, Scarred Veteran because hit points are never a bad thing. Unless it's on your enemy, then they're kind of a bad thing. And our Demon Smith, you saw how helpful Final Transmutation was. This also reduces the cost of it and reduces the cooldown, which makes it far more effective. A careful casting here, um, that would also be useful because we could get a Winds of Magic cost reduction and a cooldown reduction, which again just means more magic, which means more damage to your enemy. So I definitely like that idea. And let's see if there's any other armies that need to move this turn. That was certainly one that did. This one has no business being in combat. This one really has no business being in combat. So it looks like Drazhoeth has movement points, but is still um, replenishing um, from a large fight with Cathay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let that replenishment continue. I do not want to risk this army is a very potent army. He really needs backup, um, but in order to get backup, we're going to have to make way more units recruitable. And um, at the moment, that means we need to be spending more on adding uh, more units. So like, for instance, warriors, we have 
a decent number, but if I want to, I, I want to say we may be behind the ball there because of the Confederation. Same thing with renders. I mean, we, we just cannot get enough armaments at this point. Um, I'll go ahead and wait a turn, and then we'll see what we can do to start recruiting more forces, because that's really my biggest limiting factor right now, is, is armaments. So we may want to focus a little on increasing our armament output. So like, here's a way we can increase some armament output. We can increase our defense there. We can increase armament output here. We can improve a tower here. Um, so that was pretty good. <laughs> Let's go take a look at, uh, particularly if possible, armament increases. But I will be building defenses where I can. Yeah, I don't have enough raw materials for further armament increases on this turn, but I can spend some of my gold uh, increasing the capabilities of some of these. Um, let's see, I've got a factory here. Gap. Okay, we can improve that gold mine. That should be money well spent. It never hurts to improve defenses here as well. And then it's not going to also hurt to get some more income. So there we go. All right, let's go ahead and end this turn. We finished our research. So it's more tech work. And as far as industry goes here, we can get better... Um, uh, better, what do you call it, uh, workforce diktats, uh, I don't know if that's really a huge thing for me, siege supplies, siege logistics, I'm not getting sieged a lot, um, so I just don't see this being a huge deal, uh, let's take a look over here at sorcery and the military, system jar, that could be helpful to help with monsters, we also have medical supplies here, which gives a ward save to all characters. Smog Shroud increases ambush chance. Roaming Roundups control minus two in enemy provinces where an army is present. Income from raiding goes up. Scorched Earth gives increased income from raising and sacking, which is quite good. Um, let's just go ahead and do Mighty Monsters and then Beast of Jar here. We've done a ton of research. We, we are significantly penetrated into the research. I think we can mostly skip this, end our turn. Woo, man, we had some battles uh, <laughs> over the last episode, the beginning of this one. That was another pretty epic-sized battle there. Hopefully you all are enjoying that one. Uh, I'm going to get to some of your comments here soon as well. I just forgot to pull those up before I started the video, which of course I always do, yet never somehow remember. But um, we did manage to, it looks like, intercept this army in the underway, that is going to be Astragoth that made this interception. I'm just going to auto-resolve this. I don't think that stops my recruitment process. None of these are super helpful. And then we managed an ambush here. That is going to expose us for the green skin attacks. The question is whether I should carry out said ambush. I probably should, and I should be able to keep my units safe. I'm gonna go ahead and fight this just to make sure nothing gets killed and that we annihilate the rest of this army. All right, the battle's underway. I've got my artillery lined up in the background and I brought my strongest units up front so as the, to make it harder for the enemy to try and extinct any of my units during this battle. I'm dropping a final transmutation on enemy forces out in front of me. And I'm going to then retreat this character. And I've got my lord here as well. I'm going to go ahead and drop a little bit of a bombardment out here just to make things more difficult. My blunderbuss should shred everything prior to contact, so I'm feeling pretty confident. And then now we can just summon our Kandai back here to wipe out their archers, assuming they don't chain route first anyway, which they very well might. Goodbye, Greenskin Lord, and there we go. Pretty simple ambush. Um, business taken care of, no survivors, and no casualties on my part. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, um, I guess, just... There's like a very minuscule amount of replenishment or labor, so I guess I'll just take 600 gold. It's the greater of those options. I don't believe we'll end up in any more fights over the course of this turn end. And uh, that means I can also take a look at the comments from the last one. Um, Barbarians RS says, Pizza Hashut shall grind the bones and, uh, of the skeletons for his pizza dough. Also, Terrorgeist 
is quite good on toast. Well, that's good to know, and I'm glad. Uh, it should be some good tyranny-based food for us as we grind the vampires into meal, as you suggested. And indeed, as his name suggests, pizza does come for you, um, as the, the old Spaceballs saying would go. Uh, pizza sends out for you. Is that it? Yeah, anyway. Uh, we got our character here, and it looks like a vampire army led by Vlad is trying to go get behind us. So this is a great opportunity to put an end to that and give our new army a chance to test its wheels out here. <laughs> I love that Chaos Dwarf speak that they always uttering. Uh, it's going to let Vlad escape, it looks like, which is really rather incredulous. There's, It's unlikely that he could have retreated that far. Um, so I'm a little bit irritated by this and find it... Um, Questionable at best, I would say, that this actually occurred that way. I think that's a river, which is why we can't get to him. I'm pretty sure it's a river coming down out of the mountains. It's just a very similar color. Um, so I'm going to actually go ahead and just leave this army here in an ambush stance. A little bit risky because we're going to take a little bit of attrition, but I, I think it will be all right. Uh, meanwhile, we've got our Hobgoblin army, um, which is capable of pushing a little further in the vampire territory. Again, we need to be careful with this army. It's certainly destructible. Um, not to diss on my wonderful Hobgoblins, because they are really quite amazing. i build a factory here because I'm, I'm in grave need of armaments uh, for more armies. So we've started our factory. We'll try and start building it. So that's going to be another territory that we can speak to. What else can we do on this turn? So Astragoth finished his recruiting. We've got Skaven coming after us. And we've got Greenskins out in front of us. Forest of Gloom behind us. I think, I think I'm going to go ahead and reclaim the Forest of Doom real quick. Or Forest of Gloom, I should say. And then if Akendorf, yeah, it's a capital. If I go occupy it, we can put in a level 5 tower. Pretty easily claim it for ourselves. And same thing here, so we can occupy as a tower at level 5. And so now the Forest of Gloom will have all these building options available, which I intend to take advantage of. Unfortunately, there's no trading that we can do here. No trade goods, I should say. That'll be a good start. Um, no need to overspend there. Let's take a look at our labor economy. We are missing some labor there because it needs to be activated. And we no doubt have plenty elsewhere. Except... Okay. Let's so make sure... Labor's chugging along. We are doing good on armaments. That number continues to increase. And let's make sure we take advantage where we should be. Okay, that's our convoy. We did survive the turn in here. We had significant replenishment. As our Wurzag is nearby, and I think I'm going to use Iron Rock here as a potential ambush point. I'm going to move up close to the settlement. There is a small garrison at Iron Rock that can help reinforce me. Azag's, or Wurzag has a pretty, signif uh, pretty significant army. He's got a couple of spiders and some rock lobbers and trolls. It's not amazing, but it's, I wouldn't want to underestimate it. I'm pretty sure we can take it. Now, meanwhile, we had taken control of Karakazul, which got damaged by an enemy agent here. That's somewhat irritating. Our income is really going to to go up. It just did right there. Uh, Black Iron Mine is within range, and that would give us another settlement and another province. And there's an iron facility there too, which I believe gives us more production. I don't remember which one, but it'll give us more production. Uh, there's a significant force of Skaven there, in numbers, I should say, significant numbers. Uh, insignificant in terms of quality, um, but it should make for some pretty entertaining uh, Dreadquake mortaring if we wish to see it. I'm just going to make sure that I understand. Yeah, it's open ground, so this should be some pretty entertaining Dreadquake mortar work here. They do have a Plague Claw, but feasibly we should be able to get rid of that rather quickly. All right, the battle's underway. I'm going to immediately open fire on the uh, Plague Claw catapults, because that's the only ranged um, threat, per se, and hopefully my first shot will just KO it. That was a really good one. <laughs> 
So I think that the Plague Claw is going to get its first and only shot, which of course landed right in my troops and caused a ton of damage, which is why I targeted it to begin with, but I don't believe we'll be hearing any more from that Plague Claw catapult. That is the end of that. Uh, meanwhile now, I'm going to start, get, uh, start targeting uh, Skaven Slave Slingers. And the enemy approacheth. My units do have the Suppress and the range units, and I have some of the longer ranged Infernal Guard Fire Glaives here. Some of them are kind of positioned behind a little knob here, though, that's kind of annoying. Um, but they still should be able to operate. All right, here comes a Dread Quake Shot. Oh, come on, land in the middle of that group. Land in that group. Ooh. Pretty gruesome. Pretty gruesome. I'm gonna continue to fire here. Yes! Okay, artillery is good. My fire glaives are in range. I love the, the sounds these guys make. Kind of sounds like lasers almost. <laughs> A really cool noise. Oh, that dread quake hit was beautiful. So the enemy's gonna be suppressed. I've got um, Zata in the black here. I may use him to come do a little tanking up front to try and hold the enemy inside range of my blunderbuss and fire glaives. So I'm gonna kinda... Be... Oh, okay, we're getting summoned on behind, but it's no big deal. And there was a summon of clan rats right in the middle of my guys here, but they're likely to rout here near instantly. Okay, I'm gonna put another summon over here just to be annoying. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna drop the bombardment right here and make them pay for anything that just summoned on me. Some, well, I, I don't even know why I'm running my infantry forward. Let's be honest, those Skaven slaves don't pose any real threat to my units here. Okay. Alright, we've got the Skaven pretty well fixed, and now their, their big dude here is in some big trouble. He's taking some significant fire from my skirmishers. My artillery needs to be on defensive as well. I'm gonna target these units here. Zatan's taking a little bit of a beating, so I'm gonna give him some buffs. I'm gonna debuff this big monster. Let's do a little bit of bombardment work here. Bring that thing down. Bring it down. Bring it down. It's unbreakable. Ow. But it's about to drop. It's got very few hit points left. There it goes. All right, so that is out of the way. We've got this assassin through to our fire glaives. So I'm going to take care of that. I'm not really sure how the Skaven haven't routed. I guess it's because their leaders are alive, but that can be changed. That can be changed. So I'm going to go make their leaders very much not alive. There's still an assassin rat out here that needs to be dealt with. So Howling Warp Gale got us there. These little debuffs here. And then... There we go. Alright, so that's going to be a solid success. Their leader is trying to escape. We should put an end to that. I'm going to kill off... Well, actually, it doesn't matter whether we kill them off because we're attacking their settlement. So let's go ahead and end the battle. Well, the Dreadquake Mortar very much uh, lived up to its name. 511 kills, 32,253 total damage dealt. And with 1,700 value against this army, that's a pretty significant value um, because this army was mostly chaff trash. So we have another factory we're going to occupy. I don't want to make everything a factory. We'll still need to continue to expand our raw resources, and I will. Shrieker units. This, okay, it does give me salt as well, though. Okay, um, so yeah, our factory needs an upgrade here. I'm not going to have a whole lot of other money for this turn. But let's see whether anything else can make a valid attack. We do have these skill points that we need to hand out as well. Let's continue on Scarred Veteran. 
Then our Demon Smith we got Arcane Conduit, Final Transmutation, which was all good. We have Scouting taken care of. Oh, we can get more than one of these abilities. How nice. All-terrain vehicle would be kind of cool. I don't know if it does a whole lot in this one, but could be handy. But let's uh, finish careful casting. I think that would be of more value to us. Simply put as a caster. Got a skill point here. Discard veteran. Skip that. Unassigned skill points. Satan the black. Looks like we were working on firing drills with him. That was his army that you just saw fighting there. I do not have any magic in his army, which would be appropriate. So if we get the right unit recruited, we could drop one of these wolf archers and take care of that. Um, let's go take a look at our other armies, because make sure. Okay, that one sits. Nothing to go there, nothing to go there. Drazweth the Ashen. Has his movement points. There are some Cathayan forces in the vicinity, though not a lot. Ugh. The Gorge, is that Vampiric Corruption that's still going on here? Is that Chaos? No, it's Chaos Corruption. Okay. Chaos Corruption bodes well for us. Um, looks like Cathay is about to move a sizable force through this um, choke point. And I think I could do a couple of things here. One, if I fall back from Scrap Tower, the AI, uh, the AI is likely to attack it. And they'll probably take it, which is not the, the worst thing to happen. But if I move forward here in an ambush stance, I might be able to wipe out that Cathayan army as it comes in to reinforce. So, like, for instance, I'm going to move it up right here. And that would be awesome to just raffle stomp that Cathayan force before they're ever able to do anything. Now, back here, we... Probably need to... Let's see, that's a convoy. I really do need more Set units in this army. Wrong. What I can recruit, though, is very limited at the moment, unfortunately. Very limited. Um, we could fill it with some of these hobgoblin units, I, I guess, just for the time being, which is better than nothing. But they are kind of nothing. <laughs> So let's get into the forge, and, well, first let's look at a couple of things. Uh, we are at 17 of 16 on warriors. 8 of 2 on infernal card fire glaives. 12 of 12, 8 of 8, so we should get, I mean, other than the warriors and the infernal guard fire glaives, whatever upgrade we get should be mostly one for one if we go into the forge and get more on purchase. Um, we, we definitely want to purchase more. Let's do a couple upgrades there, and then I have enough probably for one more. Now let's throw that on War Machines. Okay. Then we'll just kind of keep building up our armaments, because boy do we need armaments. Anyway, that's going to be about all the time I have for this episode. Um, I still have convoys returning, um, and I will see you all on the next one, Air of Carthage. Signing off for now. See you soon.